I have to first turn around. Okay. That's not in my face. Um, maybe I should share this first. I don't know how to do this. Uh, hi guys. I am, I haven't periscoped in a while and I kind of forget how to do this, but I wanted to just discuss a little bit about today's motion. Um, I will tell you this. I know Colin has blogged about it and, uh, he is, uh, the legal expert on the, the issues and we are trying to coordinate so that we can do kind of a short undisclosed addendum type of thing so we can discuss it fully. I know people have a lot of questions about the ruling today. Uh, so first of all, our reaction, when I say our, I just mean um, those of us, you know, close to Adnan. Uh, to be very honest, we all knew it was a long shot to begin with and nobody is particularly shocked. Um, Justin called me last night to let me know that um, that, that the motion had been denied. I, you know, was, we were disappointed, but we were not shocked. Um, it's it's really tough. It is very, very hard to get bail in a situation when somebody is facing murder and one charges. Even as somebody, who, even if you accept the argument that he is no longer convicted and he is innocent until, you know, proven guilty, which, you know, people are debating whether or not that's his current status. But even if you're to make that argument, it is hard in a murder one case to get bail, even with all the factors in your favor. And all the factors really were in his favor, I, don't, I would argue. Um, it seems that there are kind of two reasons that the judge denied the motion. One is because he says that there are outstanding... First of all, I think it seems like he says procedurally the case is not with him. It is with uh, the, the, the Court of Appeals. Like, it's not his case to decide at this point. He did what he was told through the remand and he sent it back to the Court of Appeals. Um, so it seems like what he's saying is procedurally it's not like in his in his... I don't know, power or authority to be granting bail right now. The second reason, and he, this is interesting, he didn't really have to go to this considering, you know, he's already saying that it's not within his kind of jurisdiction or whatever. Um, but he said that he, he, although he doesn't think it's not as dangerous to himself or to anybody else, um, that he, that he could be a flight risk. I thought that was really odd. Um, because, I mean, of course, we're, we made the argument that he's not going to be a flight risk for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, if he was tried and convicted again, um, and he got another life sentence. Well, he's already served much of what is considered a life sentence. Um, there is pending litigation in Maryland that would reduce the life sentences of juvenile offenders, and Adnan would fall into that. And so even if he were retried, thank you to everybody who loves the color of my scarf. <laughs> That's really sweet. I'm getting a lot of that. But anyway, e even if he were retried, completely convicted again, he would be probably resentenced under guidelines impacting juvenile offenders and so he wouldn't have that many more years to actually serve beyond that obviously he's incredibly recognizable where is he going to go he has no travel documents um he just has no reason to flee instead of facing the charges and so i i don't agree with the judge um on that point but i am thankful that he to me i think he left the door open um to revisit the bail issue if the Court of Appeals denies the state's appeal. And just to remind people what's happening in the other appeal, which is like the big, the big, big, um, the big issue, is that Adnan, um, the same judge, overturned Adnan's conviction and ordered a new trial. The state appealed it, okay? So now the Court of Special Appeals, COSA, has to decide whether or not Adnan gets the new trial like Judge Welch ordered, or if they will reverse his ruling. And, like, that's kind of the big, that is the big one. I mean, the bail motion was a long shot. We wanted to give it a shot. Didn't work out. Um, if COSA rejects the state's appeal, then I think we could actually renew this motion and we could try another shot at the bail hearing. Uh, and if he doesn't get bail, he doesn't get bail. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, and this is, like, outside the legal analysis, and, you know, we're going to get much more into that, hopefully in undisclosed. Um, and I do encourage everybody to go read Colin's blog that he posted um, late this afternoon, uh, is this. When, when Adnan's conviction was overturned, um, one of the first things that I thought of was that we should apply for bail now, and Justin as well. Now, Adnan was immediately concerned. Uh, he wasn't sure if it was a good idea to apply for bail. And we had a really <laughs> robust argument about it, um, in which I was very frustrated. I didn't understand it. But, you know... I think, I don't know if Mark is on 
the Periscope tonight, Mark Free, who was the co-defendant for Joey uh, Watkins from our second season case that we're currently covering. But Mark tweeted about this too, and he said maybe it's best that he didn't get the bail because things can really go wrong. Hi, Mark. Oh, you are here. Great. I'm glad you're here because I don't have the perspective of somebody who's been incarcerated. And what Adnan said is this. Adnan said that he knew a number of people who, having been granted bail, left the prison. Something happened. Like, let's say they violated some condition or they got into a fight and they can't, they, they had to come back. And that that was really traumatic for them. And he was worried about that. He was worried about... And I also think, personally, I do think that Adnan was, you know, as a ch he was a child when he was incarcerated, 17 years old. He's a grown man now. I'm sure he's institutionalized on some level. And I think he might have some fears about coming back into society and, um, and how to deal with that. But also how to deal with that, not as somebody whose conviction is done and he's won, a, won an acquittal, but somebody who is just living in this limbo and might have to go back to prison. That was one thing that he explained that, you know, the, the, a lot of things can go wrong. He was worried about the media attention, about being harassed, about being stalked. Uh, and he actually has no idea how much attention his case has gotten, but he knew it was enough. Um, he also was a little bit worried about where he was going to live um, while he's waiting. Oh my, sorry, my phone's going to die soon. Because his, of course, his, he has his parents' home. Uh, his mother has a home daycare center. And she had already offered, she said, I'll, I'll close it down. But he didn't want that because his father's retired. And the only other source of life, actual income is the, the, his mom's daycare center. And he couldn't live there. Um, he could not live there while she has the daycare center active. So he didn't want that to happen. I don't think, he's never lived alone in his life. Um, he certainly had expressed concern about being a burden on anybody else. And so, you know, these were things we were all, and I kept, I just said to him, you know what, we'll cross these bridges when we get to it. We will, we will figure it out and he will figure it out and, and he's a strong guy and we'll give him all the support. And so that's, we had put those decisions on hold until this happened. So I think knowing Adnan, and I haven't spoken to him, um, when, <laughs> when Justin called me last night, uh, he was laughing that, you know, Adnan will probably hear about this uh, from the news like he always does because we, we can't pick up the phone and call him. So, I don't know if he's called his family tonight. I haven't heard from him tonight. And uh, when he does call, I know Adnan. And I'm guessing his reaction will be, you know, maybe this was for the best. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe it was. Um, and, you know, Mark, again, Mark is on here. He had said certain, he had said something similar. And it seems like this is a concern for other people, too. Um, also, I know Adnan had said, well, you know, when we were discussing whether or not to file the bail motion, he said, it's such a long shot, we're probably going to lose, and that's going to give the state a win. Um, none of us wanted to do that. But we we just, we kind of convinced him anyway, and we gave it a shot. So that's it. Well, thank you. Um, oh, there's a, we've got a Marty Tancliffe on here. And uh, he was, he went to prison at 19, and uh, he, he was released when he was 37. And... Um, and, and thank you, Marty, for all you do. And thank you for, to Mark also for your support, too. And you know what? He know, Adnan knows it's going to take time. It, ta it takes so long for these things to, like, um, be resolved. So we're hanging in there. And what I'm going to now ask, uh, where's Colin's blog? Actually, uh, our, the Undisclosed account has tweeted it out, the link, and um, both on Twitter and, and it's on Facebook, too. So... That's it. I don't... Um, maybe I'll answer a couple questions if you guys have any. But otherwise, I'm probably just going to get out of here. Let's see. What's the next step? The next step is we have to just wait for for the other appeal to be decided. Inshallah. Thank you. Um, so once the other appeal is decided, then we know. I mean, we have very high hopes of winning the appeal. Um, and that would grant him a new trial. And then, you know, we're going to probably sometime in 2017 deal with it. No idea when it'll be decided. No idea uh, if COSA will like when they're going to rule, will he be moved to a lower security facility? So this is also interesting. We actually, after his conviction was overturned, had a discussion about asking the court to move him to a lower, to a different facility. And that was also something Adnan was not comfortable with because he now has a life there. He has a community, he has friends, he has a routine, he has a job. And he said, yeah, I'm in a maximum security facility, 
but I he prefers to stay there uh, pending trial. Uh, if, if he doesn't get bail, then be moved to a new place where he doesn't know the people, he doesn't have a routine. And uh, Marty is saying he's safer in a, in a max facility, so that's another good thing, too. Um, I had a dream that Adnan was freed for 2017 Ramadan. Will it happen? Who knows? I don't know. It'd be amazing. His conviction was overturned last Ramadan, so you never know. Um, anything else? Thank you guys for all the good wishes. I really appreciate it. Um... Does writing, writing to Brian Frosch hurt or help? I can't imagine it would hurt unless you cuss him out or something. Uh, so, I mean, I tweet at him, write at him, um, and, and I would say, you know, to request the state to stop fighting it. They just they just fight it forever. When you'll We'll be back on Monday with a new Undisclosed episode. We recorded two episodes today. I got my luggage just two days ago, thank God. Um, actually, no, just yesterday I got my luggage. It took a lot. But, um, yeah, so I got it back. It's great, away luggage, and my recording equipment is back. The cat's fine. I had a great time in Disney. I don't know if I'll ever want to go back, but, oh, my God, exhausting. Anyway, all right, guys, good night. Uh, I will see you online and uh, hopefully uh, connect with you on uh, Twitter or uh, and listen to the podcast. Good night, guys. Bye.